Hello, everybody. We'll get started in just a moment. I just wanted to get the tech set up. I'm just going to scroll through who's here and early, which I'm so impressed. <laughs> Debbie, Kimberly, Carol, Joyce, Kathleen, Krista, Sherry. I think, Sherry, you are joining in from very far away, I think, if I am correct on who you are. Laura. Oh, my gosh. It's so great to see so many wonderful names popping in. Thank you all for being here. And yeah, sorry, I'm just kind of scrolling through to see who has made it. Yay. And I love punctual people. It's not easy, is it, to like, especially on a Sunday night, to be like on time? You know, it's like, it takes a little effort and energy. So I just want to say a big, big thank you. Please, as you're coming in, which again, I know we've got, we have one more minute. As you're coming in, if you would just head on over into the chat box and introduce yourself and share maybe a 2024 intention. I know that we're only, what, seven days in, and yet there's so much kind of bubbling up and happening that I think it's really nice to get clear on what is an intention. I just mean like one. So you don't have to share like, here's my list of goals or dreams. Just think about maybe what's one intention that you're willing to share. And, you know, it could be drink more tea. Like it doesn't have to be profound, like write the next greatest novel. Thinking about what would be meaningful to you as you think about this brand new year ahead. So again, a big welcome to everyone. And I am really, I'm like so excited to be here with you tonight. And this is just a fun thing to share because, you know, as I think about it, you guys, tomorrow I think is going to be really hard on people. I even had lunch with a friend today and I, as I thought about tomorrow, like my belly got queasy. And it's not because I don't have exciting things happening tomorrow. It's just like tomorrow means back to reality, right? It's like our first full week in the new year. And that's hard. It's hard on people. So I just want to mention that in case you too are experiencing a little, what are they called? Sunday scaries, right? Because this is, we want you to be able to go into this with a bit more tranquility. But there is something about having been out of sorts, really not knowing what day or time it is for a couple of weeks, right? It's it's kind of tricky to be like, okay, tomorrow is like real life. So again, big welcome to everyone who is coming in. It's such a treat to be with you tonight. And just a heads up, if you have to leave early or you know something comes up and you have to step away and you miss a journal prompt or something like that, I will be sharing this with you, the replay, and possibly even the slide deck. So just you know, don't worry, be as present as you can for our time together. And yet also know that if you must step away, I know I have a friend joining in from the cab on the way back from the airport, and she just flew back from Europe. So you know what? It's it's fine. Wherever you are right now is absolutely beautiful. And I also want to say, as I was going through the the guest list for tonight, I was seeing so many names that I recognize and have known for years. And I was so delighted. So again, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your Sunday night to be here with me. So again, if you'll just head on over into the chat box, introduce yourself, and then one 2024 intention. So I'm going to head on over into the chat box and just see who is here and what you guys have to say. Pittsburgh, Joyce from Sydney, Australia. Joyce, I'm so impressed. 10 a.m. Okay, that's great. I love that. At least it's not like, you know, some ungodly hour. So wonderful. Thank you for being here. Letting go. I love that. Allow. Savor. I like that too. Connect. Get things done. <laughs> yes. Sally, healthy habits. Yay, Sally. Lisa is to shed. That's my girl. Michelle. All right. More vitality in many, many areas. Love it. Paula. Trying to declutter the entire house and garage. Okay, no big deal. 
<laughs> just the entire house and garage, not just the closet. I love it, Paula. And Paula, I got your snail mail today and it made me so, so happy. So I'll send you a little love for that. And from Alberta, self-love. Saying no. Yes, yes, no, no, no. No is a complete sentence. I like no thank you because it just has a little bit more love in it. But yes, no is wonderful. Consistency. Maintain delight. Say yes to me more. Yes, yes to you. Have more fun. Beatrice and Sofa Nispa. Take a bit better care of myself. Yes. Flourish. Okay, these are great. Lara from Australia, who was on the podcast a few years ago. Welcome. I love that Australia represents tonight. Marin County, intentionally choose how to spend my time, energy, and money. I love that. And I am so with you right now. Angela, make every day count. No big deal. <laughs> from the UK. Welcome. Catherine from Up the Hill, Simplify. Hello, Denise Marie. I'm from Jupiter, not the planets. <laughs> Your faith and courage, love. Hello, Nicole, and welcome to the Coterie. Deep shadow work. All right. Well, that's that's that is deep. I love that. I'm impressed. Lots of courage there. Connection and renewal. Hello, Arturo, Poland. Getting more treats. Okay, that is this person's dog. I love it. It's a wonderful intention. Reconnect with myself, Kat. I love it. Love it. And you know what, Kat? I was inspired by you. And then I saw it's a thing. The N out list. I love kind of what you share over on Instagram. It's so inspiring. Your regular goals, things along those lines. And your N out list. And then I read, I don't know if it was in the New York Times. I'm like, N and out lists are the new resolutions. I'm like, who knew? Of course, Kat was doing that. Hello, Miss Jenny. Simplicity and time for creativity. Catherine Montreal, replenish. You guys, these are great. Carol, joyfully and let go of the pressure. That's that's wonderful. Debbie, connection. We've got joy and renewal. Awesome, you guys. These are wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing and for writing and wellness, especially rest. I love it. And you may recognize Stephanie's name because she was recently featured in Bella Grace magazine. We're so proud of her. Intentionality. Currently in the Netherlands. Oh my gosh, Patricia. It's, uh, what is it? Six hours? Ahead? Oh, it's midnight. Okay. But still, it's impressive. Plan, be positive. Procrastination will not be in my dictionary anymore. Wow. Lou Deed, my phrase is a bold reach out. And Lou Deed published a book of poetry this year, which was stunning, gorgeous. Such a treat to be able to have a pre-review of it. All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much for being here. So I am truly honored. And anyone who wasn't here whenever I first mentioned, please grab your journal, grab a pen, grab something to drink and know if you miss anything, like you have to step away or you're in a cab and you have to get out. Just know that you're going to get a replay of this and also maybe even the slide deck. So just if you could kind of allow yourself to get settled in and I am just going to head on over and go start going through this slide deck that I spent so much time creating for you because so many pretty images, not ain't mine, but I, I pulled in a lot of really pretty imagery for you. And I'd just like to introduce myself in case I'm new to any of you. So I write books, I host The Coterie, and I serve as president of Pigs and Pugs Project. And by the end of last year, we had donated between six dollars and $7,000, and I just can't remember off the top of my head, I should have looked at it, but to pig sanctuaries and pug rescues. So a portion of everything Tranquility Du Jour goes toward that in my therapy practice. So I just want to say a big thank you for supporting my work and ultimately pigs and pugs in need. So I live in D.C., down the hill from Catherine, and I dream of Paris, Paris. And my work has been featured in Cosmo, Huffington Post, Bella Grace, Washington Post, and more. So I just always like to share that a little street cred, so to speak, about the work that I do. And my mission really is to help midlife women find more beauty and balance in every day. And then I love matcha lattes. I'm currently sipping matcha tea, which is like lovely and green, which I don't know if you can see. And I love snail mail. 
I totaled it up. I think I sent about 250 snail mail cards this year, which is insane. And I love point shoes. I even have some featured on my mantle. So that's me in a nutshell. And again, so grateful you're here. So what are we going to do tonight? I want to define tranquility for you. I just always love starting events with that. For A, I think we can all use a little refresher. B, if you're new to my work of tranquility du jour, I like to just share kind of what my take is on it. We'll do a little centering. Always good to get grounded. I'm going to share four journal prompts, reflective journal prompts, curated journal prompts that I've pulled together for you to help kind of drop into this season. I'm going to give you a peek into the Coterie, and Doors just officially opened for everyone that wasn't a current member or on the wait list. It just officially opened on January 1st, and Doors closed next Saturday, so in six days. So I want to share a little bit about it because it's the main thing that I'm doing now and to answer any questions you might have. And then last but not least, well, two things, 2024 Tranquility Tips, and I have them written down over here for you. And I'm also going to do a little show and tell, and I've got some treats over here to show you. So that's the time in a nutshell. I figure we'll go probably 45 minutes to an hour, just for those of you who need help planning and are in the Netherlands and probably want to go to sleep. All right. So why tranquility? So tranquility is the quality of calm within a full and meaningful life. So Many years ago, I looked up the definition, which was the quality of calm. And so I just kind of added to it this idea of full. And what I mean by full is it's not just something you have or you get when you're on a yoga mat or, you know, on a beautiful hike, right? It's like in the day-to-day, the everyday, the minutia, the crying baby, the barking dog, the constant pings and dings of our devices, how do we have tranquility then? And then meaningful, just meaning that we're living a life that aligns with our values. So that's my definition of tranquility and really what informs the work that I do. So let's take a moment to get centered. So come into a comfortable seat and maybe bringing hands onto your thighs, palms can face up or down. And lift those shoulders up to your ears and then drop them down. And maybe even if you can, bring those shoulder blades down your back like you're sitting on a throne. So nice, tall, proud posture. And let's begin by taking a few deep breaths together. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth or nose. Again, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And if you'd like for a little extra grounding and self-care, bring a hand to your heart and a hand to your belly. If not, you're welcome to keep the hands on the thighs. And let's begin by tuning our attention to our physical body. So what do you notice physically right now? Is there air on your skin? about your clothing on your skin. So I encourage you to wear something cozy just so you feel good. I think fitted or uncomfortable. Do you feel if you have your hand on your heart, can you feel the heat, the warmth of that or hands on your thighs? And now notice where are you emotionally right now? Are you feeling what I mentioned earlier, a little bit of butterflies about tomorrow, right? This like full 
week of the brand new year. It's kind of like back to reality. Or are you feeling tired? Are you feeling energized? Are you feeling excited about what's ahead? Your first full week. For those of you returning to an office tomorrow. And again, without judgment, just noticing like what bubbles up emotionally. And then mentally, where are you? you? Probably find yourself pulled throughout our time together tonight of to do's or making lists or planning tomorrow. And just see if you can. This is not easy. Let's see if you can continue to bring yourself back to this moment. And just knowing that nothing else needs to happen right now. This is your time to be with your breath, to be with reflection to be with this beautiful community of people. And let's create an intention for our time together, whatever that might be. It could be presence, focus, inspiration, awareness. There's no right answer. Just noticing what bubbles up as you think about your intention for our time together tonight. Beautiful. Let's take a big inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And let the eyes flutter open. Wonderful. Well, welcome back, everyone. So go ahead and grab your journals and a pen. And we'll move into our journal prompts. So I thought long and hard about these, right? Because I've been doing some journal prompts for the Coterie. And we're going to have uh, more journal prompts at our seasonal soiree on Saturday. And I share them on Pink Friday, which was a November event after, which was Black Friday, but Pink Friday. So I've been sharing a lot also in the salon. So I've been sharing a lot of different reflection questions. And honestly, every time you approach them, they're probably a little different, but I wanted to come up with something a little unique, right, for our experience, particularly because we have some of the people who have joined all those other events joining us here tonight. So these are curated and also really kind of thought through intentionally. Now, this is a question I always love to ask, and it's, what am I noticing Mentally, physically, and emotionally. So I walked you through that in the mindful check-in. What are you noticing mentally, physically, and emotionally as you move into this new year? So I'm going to give us a few minutes, probably a couple minutes, just a few, I should say a few moments because I don't time them by the you know, second. I'm going to give you a few moments to explore this. And I'm going to hit mute just so you don't hear me writing with this. I don't want anything to distract you. But what am I noticing mentally, physically, and emotionally as I move into this new year?
take a few more moments to wrap this up. And I know I always like to say this with journal prompts that I give that, you know, some of these, and I've been in workshops where, you know, we spend 15 minutes on a journal prompt. So please know that I think that's great. And I recommend you spend more time with this. So I always like to leave a little space to come back to. But it's also kind of nice to see what comes up and out of you just without a lot of thinking, because I feel like it can be really like what is top of mind. And then the more time we spend with it, the more digging, right? It's like peeling an onion. All right. So next prompt, what are three self-care practices or rituals I'd like to prioritize for 2024? So three self-care practices or rituals that you'd like to prioritize this year. And again, I'll mute just so you don't hear me writing. So bringing this one to a close, now I said three, of course I wrote five, and I'm sure that you probably have more than three that you would like to add also. And please know that you can come back and add to this, but I'm just curious, right, as you're doing this, are there three that really stand out when you're like, if I did these three, it would make such a difference? You know, because one little thing I wrote which I don't know if this is like a massive difference, but it's morning hot water with lemon and ginger. I'd forgotten. I used to do that all the time. And I just kind of forgot about it. You know how you stop doing something that's a habit? And then it's like, oh. And I saw an Instagram reel that one of you sent to me. Thank you. And it was somebody making their, you know, hot water with lemon and ginger. And I was like, it's time. So I picked those up today. And tomorrow morning, I will have that to start my brand new week. But, you know, it's just little things, too, can be helpful. So what are three self-care practices or rituals? All right. So my third question for you, what are three goals or dreams I wish to pursue this year? Now, this goes beyond these self-care practices, right? So three goals or dreams you wish for, you long for, you plan to pursue this year. All right. I'll give you a few moments there. And again, I'll mute.
All right. So wrapping this one up, and again, I said three, but you could do 20 or you could have one. So if you want to spend more time with this, definitely come back because, you know, you may have more than three. So these are like the top three. So I listed a few and then I went through and kind of circled the ones that stand out to me as I think could have the most impact and be most exciting for me. And so for you, same thing. All right. So our last journal prompt, what word or theme is bubbling up for you in 2024? What word or theme, and I am going to be announcing mine here today, tonight, and I would love for you to do a little thinking about it. And don't worry if you don't have it yet. It's totally fine. I usually don't have mine until mid-January, but there's just something that's been really bubbling up. So what word or theme, and maybe write a few down, and we'll circle back in a moment. All right, so bringing that to a close, and those of you who just joined, I just want to go through what the four questions were, which is number one, what am I noticing mentally, physically, emotionally right now? Three self-care practices or rituals that you really want to focus on for this year. Three goals or dreams for the year. And word or theme. The reason I say theme too is because sometimes people can't narrow it down to one word. No problem. You could have a sentence. You could have a paragraph, right? There's no wrong or right way to do this. It could even be one thing that I've shared this uh, over the past few days is like it could even be a color, right? It might just be like, I want more blue, whatever blue represents for you. What is that? Is blue calming? Is it exciting? Is it new? Like whatever, right? So just kind of thinking about that for you as you move into this brand new year. All right. So great work with the journal prompts. And if there is anything you'd like to share, please put it over into the chat box. I'm going to move into our next segment where I'm going to introduce you to the Coterie, which is, this is my fourth year doing the Coterie. I absolutely love it. And I pour all of my heart and soul into it. And so I'm really excited to share it with you. So meet the Coterie. And I'll just spend a few minutes here. And then we have our New Year's tips and then a little show and tell, including my word of the year. Okay. So meet the Coterie. So here's a little peek inside. We have a workbook, obviously, and then lots of online gatherings and offerings and experiences, which I'll talk more about. And I like this because it really hones in on, it's the year-long tranquility journey for women in midlife. So if you're like, I don't know if I fit midlife, I've read different things, but I've read kind of 35 to 65 plus, right? So you could even say 35 or 40 to 70 or 35 to 75. It's that middle part of our life. And it's funny because I never thought I was in midlife until I turned 50. And I'm like, I've been in midlife for quite a while. And so I like to share this too. It's for seekers, dreamers, lifelong learners, because there's a lot of learning, but there's a lot of experiential and meaning makers in midlife longing for a safe space to flourish, connect, and grow into the most authentic version of themselves at this stage in their lives. Knowing I have many people who have been in, in this all four years and just seeing the evolution and the way in which what was important to us one, two, three, 20 years ago is very different than what it is now. 
So I'm not going to read all of this, but, you know, just taking a peek at this, right? Are there prioritizing your mental health and midlife dreams? Does that resonate? Aligning your days with your values. Um, finding space to incubate your next chapter. And this is what is part of the coterie, right? And more healthy habits. Sally said that's what, what she wanted. And that's a whole theme and a whole focus, a whole month around wellness. Okay, what do we do in the coterie? <laughs> so we have monthly masterclasses that are delivered via podcast now rather than joining live. I just have found that Zoom is fatiguing for many people doing it a lot. And it's hard to show up once a month at the exact same time. And it was at night. And so I've switched it around a little bit. It's going to be a podcast. Seasonal soirees are replacing the virtual retreats. And this seasonal soiree that's happening Saturday is only available for the Coterie. So instead of two hours live, again, it's 90 minutes. And just trying to trim a little bit of the online time, but make it more impactful. So as impactful as a virtual retreat, it's just going to be a little different. Still the journaling, still the uh, creative work, and really kind of diving in and exploring the season. Monthly co-creating. So we come together once a month for one hour and we create whatever it is that you want to work on. Some people read a book. Some people handle emails. Some people write, you know, so there's no right or wrong. Bi-monthly virtual tea date. So this is going to happen every other month on a Friday afternoon. That's when the co-creating also happens. And we're just going to pause and do a little planning over tea, a little connection. And also it'll be a little Q&A time. Monthly book club. So I'll share what this month's is later. And we're going to read along a curated book and share our experience with it. And it's going to align with the monthly masterclass, the module there. Bi-weekly lessons. So every other week, there is a lesson associated with the module that you're going to get. And then the cool thing is, is it's an online platform. And every time you do it, you you know, it says what percentage, how much you have completed, which is kind of nice. Okay, the workbook PDF, you guys, oh my gosh. So just revealed it yesterday, right? Yesterday, no, Friday, so two days ago. It is 185 pages. My graphic designer and I spent the whole holiday season working on this, and it's gorgeous. Resource library. So this is where you'll find all sorts of MP3s, PDFs, videos to help support and nourish your journey. Private community. We're on Circle, not Facebook. So we're on Circle, which is a really intuitive, fun platform that also has an app. And then overflowing bonuses. There are 14 bonuses that total up in value of what does have a monetary association to over $2,000. So the bonuses alone without the course are pretty impressive. I, again, put a lot of time and energy into presenting and pulling all this together for you. I've been working on the reimagined coterie for about three months. So Carrie and Nima, I just love these wonderful sharing about their experience with it. And weekly lessons, virtual retreats serve as a reminder. I not only belong, but I belong to something wonderful, says Miss Carrie. And then Nima, community is positive and supported. Monthly sessions feel empowering. So what are we learning? What are we studying? January is dreams. I mean, you just have to. It's dreams. And it's really diving into how do we clarify and nurture our dreams. February relationships. Now, I will say February is such a hard month for most people. It's dark. It's cold. And we're done with winter. Okay, so we're going to be honing in, though, here on relationships. Think mindful communication, love languages, things along those lines. March is style, the perfect time to spring clean that closet, and also get in touch with your signature style. How do you want to show up in the world? April, creativity, May, mindfulness, and June, wellness. So that's where those healthy habits that Sally mentioned will come in. July, joy. So this is a new module, and we're going to be talking about glimmers, which are the opposite of triggers, and they actually nourish your nervous system. Imagine that. August is compassion, again, a new one for the coterie. Learn how to be an everyday activist, live your values, and practice kindness. September, simplicity, also new. 
consider ways to slow down and declutter. So, Paula, <laughs> October mental health, learn coping skills, self care, etc. So much to say there. November is gratitude, and then December is meaning. How do we make sense of this time in our life? So, the coterie. Through this, you're going to make time for reflection. You've infused meaning into your day, learning to live with less overwhelm, taking action on those creative dreams and showed up authentically as who you are now, not who you're supposed to be or who other people want you to be. Again, a couple more testimonials. I love this Barbara, who's been with us all four years, everything I hope for and more. Community members do the rest. So supportive, so rich. D says, I love this. Kimberly Wilson, our exuberant hostess, invites her guests to abide, embrace, and share the values of living creatively, stylishly, on your own terms, and at peace. So what is the Coterie? It really is your year-long program to support 2024 dreams and infuse more beauty, balance, and creativity into your midlife journey. So we start on the 13th, which is this Saturday at noon Eastern time. And of course, you get a replay of it if you can't join live. And then the doors close in six days. So six days, they close before the seasonal soiree. So if you would like to join us, please check it out, KimberlyWilson.com slash Coterie. would love to have you. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I would be happy to answer. All right. So let's chat New Year Tranquility Tips. All right, so I've got, I'm just going to put this pretty <laughs> little image up, and I'm going to go through my tips for you. I have 10. took me a little bit to add the 10. I had nine. I'm like, we can't just do nine. I need 10. Okay, so the first one, review and reflect. Now, you already started that tonight with me, and I'm sure you've probably been in that process for a bit over the past few weeks. So making sure that that is really, really something that you can hone in on. And no, too, you don't have to finish it by January 15th. You can be in that reflection mode for quite a while. Number two is go slowly. I think we're like, you know, leaping off the start line of like, oh my gosh, and I'm supposed to do this and this and this. It's like, no, no, like be gentle. And no, tomorrow, again, it may be hard for many. So what can you do tonight after this event or tomorrow, or, you know, those of you or today, and those of you in Australia, what can you do after this event to help nourish yourself? And that's why I love this image. It's like, hot cocoa, you know, it's like all sorts of yumminess, reading a candle, cozy socks, all the things. Number three is focus on one small shift. All right. So if there was a shift that if you did this, it would make a really big difference. Can you get clarity on that? And can you focus there versus a laundry list of 30 things that you want to do in 2024. That's great to have and maybe pull that, pull it together in your year's dreams. But is there one small shift that if you implement it starting today, tonight, tomorrow, whatever, this week would make a big difference? Number four, track it. So in the salon, which is a monthly offering that I do, that's just $9 a month, every month, you get three new tranquility tools. And one thing that is consistent as a bonus, there's usually three bonuses, and this is one of them. And it's the same thing every month, but what it is, is like a monthly sort of, you know, planner for you. And it has a habit tracker. And it's really great. You can find lots of these online. And of course, some people like digital, but thinking about what are these habits and how does it affect? So for example, if you want to make a small shift, you know, keeping track of how does it affect your energy, your mood, what do you notice that's a little different from you making a small shift? Because sometimes we just don't, we don't realize it. So that's why writing things down can be so helpful. Your word or your theme. So you all journaled about it a moment ago, and many of you have probably been thinking about it for a bit. 
Let this guide you and your decisions. So again, if deep clutter, right, is a a theme, then it's like, okay, do I buy this thing or do I agree to this additional commitment or do I recognize I need less, that less is more? Next, practice and protect a sense of spaciousness. So for years, I have a, a really hard issue that I deal with, and that is overbooking. So booking one thing after another. You know, sometimes it'll be like I'm doing a private dance lesson, then I hop onto a client call, and then I am walking the dogs. I mean, all things that we deal with all the time, but yet it's it's hard to not have a sense of spaciousness between those. So that's been a word of the year before, and I highly recommend just kind of keeping that idea for you and how that could help you find more tranquility. Self-compassion and grace. So what do I mean by that? If you don't have all your goals figured out, that's fine. You don't have a word here, that's fine. You make a misstep, that's fine. You forget to have your hot water with lemon and ginger, one of my new things, for a whole week. It's okay. So can you be gentle with yourself, treat yourself as you would a dear friend, give yourself some grace, and hop back on the wagon, so to speak? So this next one is my word of the year, attention. So attention is such a gift, not just for yourself, but for others. So How many of you, and I know this because I have a tendency to do this too, but how many of you are multitasking right now, right? You're like looking at, you know, Instagram or you're sending a text message. And again, no judgment here. I mean, I do this too. So, but what I really want to try to do is more monotasking and more presence. And, you know, I found that I just didn't do as much reading this year. And I really feel like it was because I could not focus. Good to my eyes were bothering me too. But I just could not focus. So attention, where are you putting yours? No judgment, just check in. Next, of course, I'm going to mention this because I think it's so helpful, is creating a tranquility toolkit. So you may be traveling, you may be going into the office tomorrow, you may be at home What are those things that you can have at the ready that will help you feel more comfortable? So this image, I feel like, is such a beautiful representation of that. But that's why I encouraged you to bring something to drink, right? To wear comfy clothes, to just do things that help nourish and support you. So what would be in your tranquility toolkit? Last but not least, and this is a given, but again, I wanted 10, and I do think this is important, and I find myself doing this a lot. I'll just be like walking down the street, like like sobbing, like, okay, I need to be more aware and just do that privately, but it feels so good, right? So breathing and making sure that it's like, as you're feeling overwhelmed, as you're feeling like there's a lot on your plate or you're getting anxious or you know, you keep getting pinged and dinged. I hear from so many people that Slack is so triggering. So for you, it might be, you know, a text message or whatever. And the way I'm dealing with that is I go to do not disturb a lot these days. And I love it. So review, reflect. Number one, two, go slowly. Three, focus on one small shift, just a little baby nugget. Number four, track it, track the shift. What did you notice? How did it go? Five, let your word or theme of the year be your guide. And it's okay if you don't have it yet, but just thinking about what is it I want more of? Attention, focus, focus, focus. It's so hard. I just recorded my year in review podcast, so that will release tomorrow. And in it, I mention a podcast that I listened to, and I have to say in the history of podcasts, I've maybe listened to 10 to 20. But yesterday I listened to one because my partner recommended it. It is an Ezra Klein podcast on focus. I think it's his latest one. Anyway, I put a link to it in the year in review podcast that releases tomorrow. And what I thought was so interesting is like 
my partner said to me, oh, I just listened to this great podcast. I think you'll like it. And it's on attention. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is my thought for the word of the year. So I just thought that was so like on brand and on board with like everything I wanted. And you know what's crazy, you guys? I had to replay that podcast because I'd gotten distracted. I was on a train. I was looking out the window at snow, you know. But I'm like, okay, focus, attention. Next is get your tranquility toolkit all set up. And last but not least, breathe. All right. So I'm curious which of these resonates with you. Please put any questions or comments over in the chat box. Next section is show and tell. All right. So I love this section. And I actually have a few things for you tonight, just a few little treats of things that I'm finding kind of fun and wanted to share. So usually it's books and never fear. I will be sharing books. Advanced tranquility. So this is something that I'm working on. And Tranquilista is a book that I released in 2010, and I'm doing an updated version for midlife. And this is the cover that we came up with in the fall. My hope and my wish was to actually release the updated book around holiday. That did not happen. And that's okay. So at some point in 2024, my hope is to release it. But isn't this adorable? And the illustrator who illustrated Tranquilista, she even put little gizmo on there and she had seen on Instagram that he had a pink bow tie and something in a photo and she did that for him and then gave him a beret and then he only has one eye and she did a little X there. It was just adorable. So anyway, this will be the cover of the book. Now I just have to write the book. So next thing that I'm really excited to share, this is absolutely not done and I, it's not published. I don't think that you can even find this, but this is Substack. And my plan is to release uh, Tranquility Du Jour Substack in the next probably month or two, hopefully month, but it may be month or two. So stay tuned for that. I'm really excited. And the idea is to do some life lately post, uh, my ballet journal of the different things that I'm doing. I have to tell you guys too, the ballet journal. So I, last week I signed up for a five-day ballet intensive. Well, in October I did, but I did it last week, January 1st through the 5th, just to make myself not work all the time and also not lead a workshop or a retreat like I've done for years, maybe 20 years on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. And I, I, I signed up for something just to keep myself from doing that because I've always done it. I love it, but I'm trying to do things a little differently. So that's kind of the thing that I had talked about in a, in a previous love note of like saving me from myself. So anyway, look for this coming soon. And if you have any things that you're like, I want you to talk about this in it, well, so look forward to sharing that. Now, a few favorite things. Okay, these are just random that I wanted to share. So first off, of course, I had to do books because that's what I do. <laughs> so this book I found at a used book. So it's a bookstore and they have a lot of used books there. So this was used and it's just like it's a new copy, but how to be authentic, the quest for fulfillment and all about Simone de Beauvoir. I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly. I hope so somewhat. But anyway, this book is so yummy. I'm enjoying it. I just got it maybe a week ago. So good. And I got it out in Shepherdstown, Mr. Arturo slash Danielle, who's joining tonight. The other book I wanted to mention, this is the book for book club, the Coterie Book Club, Atomic Habits. Now, I have to wonder how many of you are like me and have had this book on your bookshelf or by your bed for a long time. Look, it's like I open it to page 15. So that is apparently how far I've gotten in the book when I started it before. And so this is a book and I look forward to reading it. I've heard wonderful things. Curious if any of you have read it, what your thoughts are. And I look forward to diving in, especially as we think about dreams, which is the Coterie's first module. I think it'll be really powerful. Okay, so some other random things that are bringing me joy. So I interviewed this woman on the podcast and Lola Arnau, Ar Arnau, I believe is how she pronounces it. It was like her grand, two of her grandmother's last names. 
And so you may have heard my interview with her, Angela Gargano, and she used to do a lot of yoga and wine stuff and actually came to our my yoga studio back in like 2008 or nine and did a workshop. Well, anyway, since then, she has started this skincare, like all natural skincare line and plum oil. So I'm obsessed with it. I got a few for me and then one for many of my friends because it's so amazing. So it's plum oil. So it smells really yummy like plum. Oof. And then, yeah, and it originated in origin is France. I'm obsessed. Anyway, I don't get any kickback for this. I just wanted to share my latest obsessions. The other thing, which is so random, you guys, bows. Who knew? So I didn't know they were a thing. And whenever I was in New York with a girlfriend, the first weekend in December, it's an annual tradition that we do. We went to go see Some Like It Hot. And in front of us was a girl with like a hair bow. And my friend Jen was like, oh, I used to do those when I was young. And I was like, I just was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, I didn't really think about it. Well, then I come home and I get this email from Sarah Jessica Parker that she sent to thousands of people, but it was basically about hair bows. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's a thing. I had no idea. So anyway, I got this little satin one that I thought was very sweet and it's a barrette and just little things that make us happy, right? So Santa got me these arm warmers that I'm like kind of obsessed with. He revealed his source, which was Amazon, but you don't have to buy from Amazon. I'm sure there's many other places. But this was in my stocking and makes me so happy. And yet it's so, so basic. And I think they were like $15. Okay, the last kind of thing that's making me happy, a few favorite things, is this adorable skirt I got at the at a flea market in DuPont Circle today. So I've always been a fan of LeMay. And this is a maxi skirt, super long, vintage. And all things kind of vintage and thrifting has kind of been my thing. And it's just nice to support, you know, a woman who does this curated review of items. And yeah, and so I picked this up and I'm just like so excited to wear it tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't that the sweetest? And it'll go with everything I wear, all my TDJ stuff, and it'll just be an additional layer that I'll put over my uniform, right? Which is a TDJ top, which is my clothing line that I've I've since kind of closed down mostly. And then uh, Capri leggings. But I wear that every day. And then I just add these fun layers over it. So those are my few favorite things that I wanted to share with you. Oh, and my journal. One other thing I wanted to share is my journal. So what's so fun is together with you, I have completed my journal. So voila, right? So with with you, I'm done. And really, I kind of overdid it because I'm on a white page, which is, you know, not actually lined and part of the journal. So I I wanted to share that as a favorite thing of like, I'm so excited to start my new journal. So what are those new fresh things that you too are excited about for the new year? All right. So that's it. That was my list, right? Yes, I have my list. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Questions and takeaways. Please feel free to share over into the chat box if you have any questions, any takeaways. One thing I did want to share is anyone who has not yet joined the Coterie, watch your email because I'm going to have a, a special fun thing for you in the next 24 hours. So stay tuned for an email about that. Those of you in the Coterie, I'm so excited to get started with you. And of course, as I mentioned, we will start on Saturday with the seasonal soiree. Similar to my saving me from myself, I pushed back the start of everything a couple weeks just to allow people to kind of settle in. You know, picture a snow globe, like all shaken up and how do we just let things settle in? So that's it. So there is more information about the Coterie, KimberlyWilson.com slash Coterie. Reach out to me if you have any questions. And then I'm going to head on over here, stop the share, and see what you guys had to say. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them into the chat box. And also, please share any takeaways. Like, what is it that you are most excited about with what I shared from the reflection prompts to the habits or ideas really around a tranquil new year. All right. So, and again, thank you guys so much for being here.
Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's see. I love that you guys have so much. So sweet. Oh my gosh. Okay. I love this. I love you, Emma. Okay. Uh, Paula, hugga, 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 hugga. Yes. Angela, ideas for tranquility toolkit at work when you don't have a desk job, retail job, factory work. You know, that's a great question, Angela. And I like to have things in my purse. I mean, you guys, I travel everywhere with a water bottle. I was at a restaurant today and I set my purse down on the chair and it made a loud clunk because it was my water bottle. I mean, who takes a water bottle to a restaurant? But I always make sure, like I'm a little obsessed, and I just make sure I always have water with me. So what can you do to kind of set yourself up for success that maybe you keep in your locker, right? Or you keep in your bag that you can come out and get a little spritz of rose water or, you know, read something inspirational or spritz something, just whatever it is, or, or, or eat something. You know, I always, always have almonds, raw almonds, and then dried cranberries that are unsugared. So they're very tart. And I like to put those together and carry those with me at all times. So sometimes it's just little inspiration that you can have. Maybe it's not on your desk, right? So it could be in a bag or something along those lines. Jim and I, I was born to multitask, but then I don't get anything done. I know, Sonia, if you listen to the podcast that I recommended or mentioned, the Ezra Klein one, and again, it'll be linked in tomorrow's podcast. Oh my gosh, it, it's so, so good. Oh, I'm glad you like Tranquilista. Thank you. Colorful bookshelves. Shelves, I love ordering mine by colors too. Yeah, it's funny, Catherine, at home, I have them more by topic, right? And uh, up here, all topic, right? So on the left is mindfulness. Then there's writing because I have a bookshelf of those, but they overflowed. And then I've got ballet and then I've got art, journaling and creativity. So yeah, love the cover. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, the ballet shoes. So fun. Side hiding the word attention. I know, honey, it's not easy. Love, love, love. What is Substack? Oh, you answered. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. What's the name of the first book? Oh my gosh, how to be authentic. It's so lovely, you guys. And it's written, the woman, I believe, is Australian. So it's quite interesting how to be authentic. Simone de Beauvoir, please forgive my pronunciation and the quest for fulfillment. So far, so good. Loving it. Love atomic habits. Yay, Michelle. Good to know. Shepherdstown full of treats. Yes. Yeah, I think this book is like, Okay, it's a $27 book and I got it for like $13. And it's really, it's brand new. Whoever had this did not, um, did not, did not read it. The brand of the plum oil. Lola, I know I may not be pronouncing the name correctly. Arna, Arna, Arno, A-R-N-A-O. So, and if you need help finding it, I interviewed her on my podcast. So you could type in Lola Tranquility Du Jour podcast. It'll come right up. I interviewed her maybe late summer, early fall. Her name is Angela, and she only has a few products and, again, obsessed. And I don't get obsessed super easily. <laughs> Lots of bows and women's hair lately. Yeah, who oh, no, Kelly, it's a thing. Curious what made you close your <laughs> clothing line. <clears throat> so I did a blog post about this, and I just am in this process, thanks to midlife, of simplification. And so basically, after 22 years, I just decided I needed less complications, right? So I, we pull, we, we, you know, I gave a lot of announcements about it. And with them, when the fabric wore, was all used, right? I did save a little for myself. But when the fabric was gone, then closed it. So if you can find out more at KimberlyWilson.com slash TDJ. So loved it, did it for so many years. It was so, so special. And yet I just, simplicity. Signed it for Audible so I can read more for fun. Love it. I don't know that there's going to be a transcript, Sally. Maybe, but it's not planned, but I may be able to do that for you. Um, focusing on one small shift. I tend to go big at first and then lose steam. Yes. Gallon of water on it. I bought a gallon water bottle. Yes, they are so big. So it's funny, Sonia, I was seeing all the kids with them, right? Like there's a lot of college kids here in DC and my clients were showing up with them 
on, you know, they, they don't bring them into session, but on virtual ones. And I was like, what is up with these big things? Well, then, of course, you know, when you see things a lot like the bow, you're like, well, I want one. Anyway, so I have a big one, too. And I'm like, where is it? I haven't seen it since I got home. Anyway, it's quite big. And yeah, it's ridiculous. You're holding this big thing, but it's really nice because it comes with a straw. So you're not spilling water all over your face like I usually do. Betsy, helping me beautify more. Yes, yes. Per perfume, you guys, skincare, all the things. When I get on a live event or sit with my clients virtually, I spritz perfume. Who needs perfume for something that's virtual? But it just makes me happier. I start my day with it. I sometimes even spritz it before bed, which I know Carrie will understand. All my goals written down, but tonight I wrote down a goal I hadn't even thought of. So excited. Yay. That makes me so happy. Jennifer, I keep writing passionate, sophisticated, focused 2023. Love it. 2024 is more self-focus and to avail and using the two available lessons. Yes. Atomic Habits is fabulous. Good to know. Now we're softening the transition with the upcoming week. Carol, I'm so glad. What time again are Coterie monthly calls? Laura, if you head over to KimberlyWilson.com slash Coterie, choose the FAQs thing at the menu at the top. It'll take you down to the bottom where there's FAQs and it shares everything. So it's Friday noon and then we have Saturday noon for our seasonal retreats and or seasonal soirees. Sorry, I got to get used to the, the new name. So yeah, noon. I tried to trying to keep it consistent. Wonderful. So Glad to have you with us, Jennifer. How to be authentic. Thank you, Michelle D. At 52, simplifying is what I'm all about. Move from five bedroom house to two bedroom. Got rid of 80% of what we own. Such freedom. Such freedom. Huge, huge. 75 hard as part of a fitness challenge to drink a gallon of water a day. I love it. I think it's such a great, great challenge. And, you know, because this is 16 ounces, right? So it's like, I mean, we should be drinking so much more. So, I love that. And that's why those big things are out there. All right. So thank you, as always, for tuning in. I also want to mention I have two Coterie scholarships left. So if joining the Coterie due to the cost, which is $9.97, but as I mentioned, $2,000 worth of bonuses, then plus the whole Coterie program. And also you can join and choose two coaching sessions to go along with it. That's option two. So please check it out. Would love to have you six days left. But again, if, if finances are a problem, I ha do have two scholarships left. So please feel free to reach out to me. And if you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to ask. All of my work has really been funneled down into the Coterie. And so that's where you'll find me pouring heart and soul in a lot <laughs> throughout the year. All right, loves, thank you so much. Oh, Jenny, I do know when the in-person is hosted because I just announced it two days ago. It's going to be May 4th. And then you get to come here and see the tiny petite pink palace. So would love to have you. All right, ladies, thank you so much for joining. It's always a treat to be with you. I'm so, so grateful. If you have any questions, reach out. And if you want to share any other takeaways with me personally, you know how to find me. I think hello at KimberlyWilson.com is wonderful. It'll go to my VA. She'll help kind of streamline them my way. And I wish you a wonderful year ahead. Be gentle with yourself. Start small and focus. All right, loves. Thank you so much. Thank you for your sweet notes over in the chat. It's such a treat to be with you. Bye, ladies. Happy New Year. <laughs>